All I've ever wanted to be was a rock star. And I've never wanted to fail, but I've been knocked down more times than I can remember. And I have failed, painfully and miserably. I'm pretty sure I've become the poster child for keeping your dukes up, not just as an independent musician, but also as a business owner. When I was 16, I started my first music business, but my journey as a tortured artist begins well before then. Here's me looking all cute around age 12. And while I quickly discovered that I was pretty good at modeling early on, my true calling was music. And I am classically trained in instruments like piano and cello and a couple others, but I started writing original music when I was 13. And I even had my very first performance at the mall, about 14. Here's me rocking my black onesie and my Britney Spears inspired microphone. And I remember I even signed my very first autograph. And instead of writing to my number one fan, I wrote to my one number fan, <laughs> which was clearly just a work in progress. So then fast forward a couple of years, I started college when I was 16, but I was facing a tough situation. My parents had just split, and so my dad was now out of the picture, and my mom, bless her heart, having raised and homeschooled all five of my siblings and myself, didn't have the money to pay for my schooling, so I just needed to figure it out. And besides starting to apply for scholarships, like it was basically a part-time job, I also saw a flyer that you could win scholarship money competing in pageants. Now, side note, at the time, I thought <laughs> pageant girls were less than smart. But I was quickly proven wrong competing against these women who were not only highly intelligent, but skillful, articulate, and I had to become this chameleon to even be able to keep up. But then something amazing happened. I started to learn the rules of the game, and I did start winning scholarship money. And then everything taken together, I was able to get out of college loan and debt free. But then over the years, I didn't notice something. I noticed that a lot of these women seemed to almost give up after they stopped being Miss whatever fancy title. And I remember thinking, oh, hell no. I'm never going to let some flimsy little crown define who I'm going to be. So I became Miss Crystal. And over the course of the next decade or so, I was signed to a plethora of record labels and management deals to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. I you know, played to sold out audiences of thousands of people. I also played many a show at a dive bar to teeny tiny audiences of 10, half of which were my family and the sound guy. <laughs> and through it all, I've learned quite a few rules, three of which I'd like to share with you today. Rule number one, be resilient. Resiliency just means that regardless of what the world throws at you, you get back up and you just keep going. And for me, one of the first times I had to deal with this was in my teens, it's the 11th hour, my new hit single is about to be released, and then Mr. Rockstar Producer decides to basically try and extort money out of me. Money I didn't have, money we didn't agree on, and certainly not money we had discussed. So, safe to say, my entire project fell through. Now today, I am an entertainment attorney, so yeah, that'll never happen again. <laughs> But nonetheless, being in my teens and having all of my hopes and dreams vested in this one project, I was crushed, like truly devastated. But nonetheless, I had to get back up and I had to keep going. Which then brings me to rule number two, embrace your fears and play your own game. When I was 16, I also decided I was gonna go to law school. And for no other reason than I just wanted to be able to protect myself in my own career. But then when I actually received my letter of acceptance from law school, I remember I just had this unbelievable fear about what would happen to my identity as a musician if I went. Because quite frankly, I couldn't think of anything worse than being perceived as an attorney. <laughs> but I did go. I went, to Carl, I went to law school, I graduated, I sat for the state bar, and was lucky enough to pass the first time. But then for the second time in my life, I lost someone who had become my entire support system. So here I was with this big fancy degree, but no money, no job, and no idea what I was gonna do. Now, I did end up getting a job eventually, and I was making $12 an hour working in a law firm, just doing administrative work, and that's how it stayed for a while. 
Now, when you kind of weigh making $12 an hour, and now you're just trying to survive and support yourself. But then also fund a music career. Now you actually do have $200,000 of student loan debt from law school. I'm not, you know, I guess we all don't have to be a mathematician to see where I'm going with this. But nonetheless, I decided to stop crying about my circumstances, and I changed them. And so I decided to start Delgado Entertainment Law. And besides the fact that this actually helps me in my career as a musician today, I'm very grateful because I get to be on the ground floor in an industry that I'm so passionate about, making some of the biggest deals today. Which then brings me to rule number three, be patient. Patience is so difficult, especially when you are young. <laughs> and I'm very much so guilty of this, but throughout the majority of my 20s, I have felt so much anxiety and frustration, and no one's gonna ever discover me. But nonetheless, the goal here is that we are building long-term sustainable careers based on a game with our own rules, which is also why I decided to start Dukes Up Records. So it was not only about now having a record label, a company, and a team around my goals and my dreams, but with almost 20 years in the entertainment field now, no one can better represent me than I can myself. And also, I'm in this wonderful position where I can help other like-minded, independent artists, which is also why I wrote a book <laughs> set for release early next year. And the book is essentially just a guide on how to navigate, strike that, crush the music industry. And besides going through all the industry's best kept secrets, I also provide the, some of the most essential contracts that musicians need, but otherwise cost thousands of dollars to get from a law firm. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna end up putting myself out of business next year, but I don't care. Because someone needs to be looking out for independent artists. So if I can just leave you with something today, it's regardless of your industry type or business, the same rules apply. You have to be resilient, you have to overcome your fear, and you have to be patient. Because we are all just as equipped as any professional business to meet the challenges of our careers. And I guess if you can just keep one thing in your minds when you leave today, it's that victory is inevitable, but you gotta keep your dukes up. And in fact, I wrote a song just about that. <laughs>
hold me back I can take care of me And I've been to want me, you see What you think about that?